Father, we thank you for this time, and we just thank you um, that you sent your son Jesus to die for us, to pay the price for our sin, which is death, that we may live eternally with you, Father. What a great gift that we have received. May we want to share that to others and maybe have that joy in us and that hope in us um, that we are so excited to, to share about this great news, Father. Um, I just pray that our hearts would be filled with your word and that we would desire it and that we would crave it and that we would, um, we would use it uh, as a way of our substance, Father, um, and that, that we would be like a tree planted by the streams of water, uh, just wanting your word and just um, that we would be filled with your spirit, Father, um, and that we would be led by your spirit and not led by our, our flesh and the desires of our flesh and the desires of our eyes, Father. Um, may we uh, just be in tune with you um, and, and be a living testimony of what you've done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Just 
come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. Her dumb welcomed with open arms, praise God, just as I am. I come i 
for you and ask that you would um, truly help us to love you more than anything and to actually fear you and to know that um, sin is to be despised and um, just causes destruction. I pray that you would really help us to value and love you and to hate sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, first Peter 5 from verse 8 until the end of the chapter. First Peter 5 from verse 8 until the end of the chapter. If uh, Brad can comment, if you pass. First Peter 5, 8 to the end. Be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. My Sylvanus, our faithful brother as I consider him, I have written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. She who is in Babylon, elect together with you, greets you, and so does Mark my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word and thank you for for all the promises that you give us in the midst of all spiritual welfare. But you give us the promises that strengthen us and make us stand on that day when Satan comes and trying to trying to shake us in our faith, try to doubt us in our faith, trying to to eat us and destroy us and break us in pieces. Lord, we come to you in this evening and we trust in you. And we believe that the, Satan has the story from the beginning until the end. And we know it. Lord, we thank you for your word that you give us. And you give us the truth to help us to 
trust in you and trust in your word. Help us to memorize, help us to know, as you said to Satan, it is written. Help us to know what it is written so we can be able to stand in our war against Satan. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, you know, we are continue to meditate in First Peter, and we, I think last Sunday I, I got some uh, points in First Peter. But here I'm going to conclude um, from uh, last Friday and Sunday so we can end uh, the uh, book of First Peter. Uh, chapter 5 is the last chapter. And we talk in First Peter here about the lion. And we are, you know, I wanted to read something for you that I just um, got to, was going to help us to really uh, have a summary of what we have learned from last week and last Sunday. Christian life is like a jungle battle. Peter tell us who our enemy is. He is the devil. His work is opposed by, to all that is good in this world. He is pictured as a roaring lion seeking his prey. This adversary is like a cage, appearing sometimes as an angel, Satan, appearing sometimes as an angel of light, but another time as a serpent coiled for the strike. He is always seeking whom he may devour. He is watching for vulnerable spot. He is always watching for a weak spot, for a door that is open, for a mind that is open to his territory. He is watching for the vulnerable spot, for unguarded door to our hearts. But Paul tells us what armor we should wear in Ephesians 6, but we need not to be afraid. And that's the message today. You know, sometimes we, we, uh, we don't want to talk about Satan. We don't want to talk about devil. We don't want to talk about him. Sometimes it's scary to know that. But I just wanted to tell you, number one, he's a real. We are not talking about, when, when Jesus talked about Satan, he doesn't refer to Satan as it, but he referred to Satan as he. Means a real. So for people who are um, referring to Satan as, as something that is in the spiritual world that we don't really ha have nothing to do with it, I just wanted to tell you he is real. He's there. He's, he is our war is real. Brother Najib, uh, you know, we were talking with him last night, this morning, actually. And he was telling us about a story that he met a man, and he said, you know, please just pray for me. So he was asking him, so can you tell me what, I want, what you wanted so I can pray for you? He said, well, if you have the Spirit of God, you will know. So Brother Najib, you know, start to wonder, you know, what I'm going to do with him. So he started to, he, he was at his home bringing some, you know, cassette, etc. So he was praying for him. He said, okay, let us pray. And he started to pray. And while he's praying, he hears a lot of noise and a lot of uh, things, destroy, you know, in the house, you know, unusual things. Say, so what's going on? Most of probably my, my kids, you know, try to, to do something really bad, breaking a wall or etc. And out. So he starts to open his, his eyes to, to see what's going on. That's in the middle of his prayer. 
He found the man that he was sitting in beside him, standing in front of him, and he is like, like so angry, and his eyes open, his tongue is out, he's just so, you know, picture of Satan. So he started to pray. He said that that's never happened to him to deal with Satan in person. So he put his hand on him and he pray and say, in Jesus' name, all the power of Satan, get out from him right now. And immediately, that person, he, he was so calm, smiling, start to say to Brother Najib, thank you. That's exactly what I ask you to pray for me. Can you come to my house? Because I have a lot of these things in my house. And uh, I have hijab, hijab in English, what's it called? Okay, spelled? Spelled. Hmm? Spelled. Spelled. Thank you. Thank you, Karim. If you can come here. Uh, so, so he said, can you come and uh, he said, no, I, I'm not going to go to your house. Bring all your spell to my house and I can deal with it. <laughs> so he brought all these things that is, you know, all Satan things that controlling his life and he open it, and he look inside. He was so afraid because uh, these demons or the, these um, uh, spirits, bad spirits, stalking to him and tell him, if you do anything with these things, we're going to kill you and kill your family. So Brother Najib started to open it, and he put it in the fire. And he say, look, there is nothing inside. Start to pray. And he burned it. And then he took the rest of it and just put it in the trash. And he was delivered from all Satan power. You know, sometimes we, you know, we, we, sometimes we don't deal with that a lot. We don't see it. But it's real, and uh, Satan is, is not just a picture that we see in the movie or in our mind, but he is real. And as a believers, we have the Holy Spirit, and nothing can, can attach or attack us, or he cannot get even close to us because we are armed with the armor of God. He is so um, afraid of the blood of Christ. He is so afraid of the power of Christ. He knows that he has nothing to do with the uh, power of God. He always takes a permission before doing anything, as we learned before. In the midst of that, I wanted to tell you about a story that I... Uh, it's the, it's, I don't know if it's a story or a real story is, or is a joke. So let me say it, and I just open, have open mind for it. So uh, there's a man that he went to the, um, to the zoo. He couldn't find a job anywhere. So finally he went to the zoo and told, you know, I just wanted any job that you can give it to me. I'm just really desperate to have a job. So in this zoo... They didn't have my favorite animal. Anybody knows my favorite animal in the zoo? Hmm? The gorilla. Shelly like the giraffe. But I like the gorilla. I don't know. I, I like the gorilla. He just looks so, you know, it's just the way they are so cute, you know, they're big, but they're so cute. And they are... Cozy, you know, they, they just do whatever they want. Lazy, you know, and I love to live that life sometimes. 
have nothing to do, just sit and not to worry about anything. You know, you like that, like on Saturday, Saturday or one day, you don't want to do anything, just sit and relax, you know. So I, 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 I just correlate with the gorilla in this way. And I hope that I am, you know, I'm a gorilla. So anyway, um, uh, even my kids, one day, I think, I don't know, in, in Father Day, they give me the gorilla, you know, one day. So anyway, so, um, so they told him, you know, we have a job for you. He say, what's the job? They say, we're going to give you a suit, and you're going to be like a gorilla because we lost our gorilla. And we don't have a gorilla in the zoo. And people come specifically for the gorilla, looking for the gorilla. So you are going to act like a gorilla. Don't tell anybody. This is a secret. So we're going to put the suit, and you're going to be act like a gorilla. And you sit, and you don't go anywhere. Just sit there and be a gorilla. And we tell you what to do in all the actions and theta. So he agreed. So we went, to, went and stay and took the, the job. And he, he got the suit. And he was tell him you know, to make these voices or to do, you know, pretend like a gorilla. So he was in the gorilla. And then he was going this way. They told him, you know, you have to move a little bit to entertain, you know, the people. So if people come, you have to entertain them and go up and down, et cetera. And they give him, you know, headphones so he can really listen to them and, and follow their direction. So he did that. And then he went all the way. They tell him, go all the way up. He went all the way up. And he found, he looked, and he... He got into the lion. And he looked at the lion, and he was so afraid. And then, the, the, you know, and the lion was, was giving him all of this roaring, you know, Arr! and he started to shake and start to, and he started to scream, and then he said, help, help, help. You know, he felt like I'm going to die. And so now, you know, forget about the job. You know, he's going to die. So the lion spoke to him and tell him, can you shut up right now? If you don't shut up, we both are going to be fired today. <laughs> he was not a lion. He was actually have the suit like the other one to play the rule of the lion. But he has the sound of the lion the appearance of the lion. And I just got, I, I love that story because it can relate to the roaring lion in the Bible here in 1 Peter 5. That we have an enemy, but our enemy is like a roaring lion. Like a lion. He's not the real lion. We know that the real lion, he is the one who. Um, our king, Lion King, that is the, uh, the tribe of Judah. And we know about our, the lion, the roving lion. Start his story from Genesis 3. We know about him. And we know the end of the lion in, in Revelation 20, where he's going to end. We know everything about him here. We know who is the, who is the one who is going to overcome and destroy Satan. We know his story in the Bible. We shouldn't be afraid. We shouldn't be... Um, we shouldn't listen to him because we know the end of his story. If we go to, uh, again, uh, First Peter, this is just an introduction, and I'm going to go fast here. Um, in First Peter 5, the Bible tells us about how to overcome Satan. 
we can get to the uh, verses, please, uh, in First Peter um, five and verse verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we can see here, as we mentioned in Sunday, number one, we wanted to know who is our enemy. You have an enemy. The enemy, the Bible tells us many names about Satan. Satan, or devil, or the evil, or the wicked, or the destroyer, or Lucifer. There's many names to one person, to one character. And usually when, the, when he is showing up, he doesn't show up as the lion. Usually he show up as a friend. As angel, as a friend, he wanted to tell you something that you don't know. Like he wanted to give you an advice. He wanted to give you um, uh, company. He wanted to uh, give you um, a counselor. He wanted to give you um, an ideas. And if you listen, he's going to reveal himself later after you being Deceived. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the first thing he say here, be sober. And, you know, sober means what? means sober when we talk about be sober, talk about drugs, you know, alcohol, intoxication. And the Bible not to be, not to be intoxicated with the, with the flesh, with the lust of the flesh, with the lust of the word. You know, sometimes we get intoxicated. We are not, um, you know, we get into... Uh, full of all of these ideas of the word and the lust that make us not sober. Sober-minded in the other areas means you think clearly. You are not under the influence. When you drink alcohol, you are under the influence of alcohol, so you don't think clearly. You do all the things wrong that you will never do if you are not under influence. All the mistakes that people do when they are under toxication, under the influence of alcohol, can make you do everything wrong. That's why they measure the level, and etc. Want to be sure, are you driving under influence? And the Bible says, do not drink the alcohol and not to be under the influence of alcohol, but be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit control you. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Be sober. Be, think clearly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Don't let the word and the idea of the word, uh, you know, to control your mind, to think the way the word thinking. Second thing, be what? Vigilant. vigilant. What's the meaning of vigilant? Any ideas? Aware. Aware, right. You know, sometimes, you know, I, uh, you know, Shelly and Ruthie is coming from, from Egypt, and they are in the flight, hopefully now, to, um, you know, to Los Angeles. So, <laughs> so in, in, the, um, in the airport, you know, I just tell them all the time, be aware of your surrounding. You know, do not lose sight of where you are and what you're doing, what the people around you, especially if you are in the place that you do know. Be aware of your surrounding. 
It's so important when we are living in the world to be, to be aware to be of our surrounding. Who's your friends? Who's surrounding you? What's idea that is surrounding you? What's the uh, culture that is influenced? You know, where you are in, 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 in your spiritual life, be aware. Don't lose sight. Don't lose direction. Be aware. You know, thank God they, they catch the, the flight at the at last minute. They are the last one to be called to the, because, you know, in Egypt. Um, because sometimes you, if you drink uh, too much coffee, um, I'm just, you got palpitation, you got, no, and then you got, you don't think clearly. Well, you want it to be thinking clearly, but if you, you know, too much sometimes make you also, you know, like nervous, etc. But, you know, uh, it's good to be alert, to be aware to, of the surrounding, aware of the timing. You know, the timing is so important. If you don't know, if you, if you just, the Bible say, redeem time. Redeem the time. Not to kill time. You know, we are here in America. We wanted to kill time. You know, what, what do you mean you kill time? I haven't heard about anything in the Bible about killing time. I, I remember Pastor Latif many times, he said that. I, do, I can't understand believers, they, they, have, they waste their time. You know, I'm, he, he is... He can find time to do things, and other believers, they are just killing time. We shouldn't be that. We should redeem the time, because Satan wanted to steal the time from us to do the will of Satan. God help us to redeem the time, to be aware, to be uh, vigilant. The third thing that he's telling us in the next verse, um, verse 9, Yes, uh, Brent. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by a brotherhood in the world. Resist to him. Resist to him. You know, sometimes we are so relaxed, so lazy to, to resist the ideas, to resist the devil, and we just give up to his ideas. And get, God help us. Not to give up, but resist. Steadfast, you say. Resist to him, steadfast in their faith. In James, um, telling us about also resist the devil. In James 4, and verse um, 7. James 4, verse 7. Tell us about two orders here. The first order is to... Anybody has the verse? Uh, verse 7. Uh, yeah, James 4, verse 7. Yes, Brad, do you have the verse? You don't have the verse. Uh, James uh, 4, verse 7. Uh, Therefore... Thank you. Submit to God and then resist the devil. What's going to happen when you resist the devil? He will flee from you. Can you read it again, a breath for us? Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You see, by submitting to the Lord, you'll be able to, to resist the devil. We cannot do it by our own strings, if you are not covered, if you are not under his hand, if you are under the will of God, you are in the dangerous territory of Satan. And to be in the, in the place where you have the power to resist the devil, you need to be in God's will, God's territory. Submit, therefore submit to God. You cannot re be a rebellion or be hmm? rebellion. rebellion to God and say, I'm going to resist the devil. Or you cannot be just doing the sin and you say, I'm going to resist the devil. You 
can't do it. You are so weak, so vulnerable. God help us to get the strings from God by submitting to God. God will fight instead of you. Because when you see the devil, you say, I, I cannot really deal with you. You rely on the Lord. We hear about submit to God in humble yourself under the hand of the Lord. Remember? And he will raise you up. Submit means to humble yourself to the will of God. Humble yourself not, and don't go to the devil and try to do it by your own in arrogance and in, in pride because you can't be. Satan is stronger than you. I remember the story of um, Sunday school teacher and when asking the, the kids, you know, say, you know, if Satan comes to you and knock the door and say, open to me, what you're going to do? So one of the kids raised his hand and say, say, teacher, yes, I know what I'm going to do. So the teacher tell him, please tell us what you're going to do when Satan comes to your heart. Say, I'm going to call Jesus to open the door. <laughs> I'm going to call for him. He's stronger. I trust in him. He's in my heart. And I can call him any time. And he will deal with him. And when Satan sees Jesus, he will flee from you. God help us to, to humble yourself, to humble myself. And not to trust in my strengths or my mind or my wisdom. And not to resist the devil by my own strings, but to rely on God to do the work and to have the victory through Jesus. You see here, let's go to, um, back to 1 Peter 5. And say, therefore, um, Peter 5, please. Peter 5 and verse 8. Again, or verse 8 and 9. Be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walk about like a roving lion, seeking. You see, he's seeking. Seeking a door that is not secure. Seeking a mind that has been open to, uh, to Satan, to the ideas. Seeking emotions that is not stable. See, seeking mind that is not sober. Seeking a will that is not submitted to the Lord. Seeking a weak area in your, in your life. He knows. He, he study you very well. Study me very well. You know, everyone has a weak area. And you know it. And I know it. Maybe it's, uh, it's anger, and, God is going to, and, and Satan is going to come to use that area and to touch that area so he can, he can make you very vulnerable, so he can destroy you. Maybe the, the lust, maybe the, the love to the, Lord, to the word. Satan knows exactly the weak area of each one, what you love, what, what is your interest, your character, your personality. Everyone has different person. Satan study each one of you. He's a very good psychologist. Who's with us, psychologist here? He can do analysis of the person. He can, you know, uh, make a really good idea about who you are. He knows you. He had diagnosis. He knows exactly the weak area. And he's waiting. He just search for the time and the place and um, that you are ready, that you are not strength in the Lord, and he will come and try to destroy you. God help us to not to sleep spiritually, not to give up, 
but to be aware of our surround, be aware of the time, be aware of his mind and his deceptive and his, uh, uh, his deceiving ideas. Help us to resist him so he can flee. So he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Next verse, please. Resist him, but resist him steadfast in the faith. And in the faith here, you know, there are many types of faith, as you know. Anybody can tell me the different types of faith, if you are awake here. Okay, what type of faith? The faith of... So, let me make it easy. So, there is one faith that we have all. We all have one faith. Faith of... Resurrection. Faith in resurrection. Okay. And what else? That's, that's a faith we all believe in it. We receive the faith. And we all have the same level of that faith, regardless. So what kind of faith that? I hear it, somebody. Salvation. salvation, thank you. The faith of salvation. Where we find that? We find it in Second Peter, verse 1. If we go to Second Peter, verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1, yeah. So that will be the next week, I think, we'll, but we can, um, we can get into, um, into that. But this is the first type of faith. Faith that we all have the same faith. Can you read verse 1, please? Second Simon Peter. Peter. Yeah, go ahead. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained, like, to those who have attained, of, obtained like, like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. To those who have obtained like precious faith, we all, with us. So Peter telling us we all have that faith, that precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We all receive that kind of faith. So that's the faith of salvation. But there is other faith that we have different type of faith. That's the faith of what? What's the second type of faith? Faith of? When Peter say, Lord, give me what? More faith. Hmm? Increase my faith. So that means there is different type of faith, different level of faith. So what kind of when he say, increase my faith? Is my faith in what? What happened? And, and why Peter say increase my faith? He lost what? Trust in the Lord. So we have different level of trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. This is daily faith that we are, um, you know, with, with God, we tell him, God, help me to, to trust in you every day and increase my faith in trusting you. But there is other faith here, talking about in verse um, 2 Peter, the same chapter, chapter 1, and, and, um, and verse... Um, I'm sorry, it's, it's in, uh, in another book of um, in Judah, Judah, Jude, just, uh, just one chapter, 
and verse, um, verse 3. Jude, verse 3. So we have the faith of salvation, faith and trusting the Lord, but the third faith is we have to, um, we have to work for it. Um, the faith of salvation is free. We, we got the, um, the faith by grace, by God's mercy. But in verse, in, in, in the faith and trusting the Lord, we have to really every day God will help us to increase, um, you know, our faith in God, trusting in him. But the third type of faith here, talking about different type that we have to really work hard to get that faith. Um, in, okay, verse 3, can you read it, please? Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found that's it That's a common, I'm sorry, common salvation, that's the, the faith of salvation. That's a common for all of us. We all receive the salvation by faith. And we're going to enter heaven not according to our work, but according to the faith of salvation. If you receive the salvation by faith, and that's all common, means all of us, we have the same level of faith, faith of salvation. There is no one that has more than other, because we receive it free by grace. The trusting in the Lord, that to the faith of trusting the Lord, we have to, to you know, we receive it every day, and it's different from one to one. And it helps us to enjoy the relationship with the Lord every day as we trust him every day. But this one here, third, okay, the common salvation. Go ahead. I found it. I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith that was once... other faith here. To contend, to contend earnestly. That's, there is a work on it. For the faith, okay, go ahead. Which was once for all delivered to the saints. So what do you think, what kind of faith here? Talking about what kind of faith? What kind of faith that which was once for all delivered to the saints? What he's talking about here? Anybody aware? And we have to earnestly, you know, that you to contend earnestly for the faith. It's the faith of the word of God. We trust in the word of God. That's, that's received, Paul received the word of God. Peter received the word of God. The people who, who wrote the Bible received once. And there, nobody can add to that faith, the faith in the Bible, the faith in his word. You see, it talking about what? Once for all. Means no one will, will add a word to this Bible because it's finished. Everything in the Bible. You see a lot of people coming and say, you know, we can add one chapter here. When we can, when, you know, we need philosophy to add to, the Bible doesn't need philosophy. The Bible doesn't need to, to have people work hard to add to it because we have it and we receive it once and forever. It means we don't need other truth because all the truth has been in the Bible. Do you understand, guys? So if somebody comes and tells you, you know, I have a revelation for you. What kind of revelation? Well, something that I wanted to tell you. And it's not in the word of God. That means what? Get rid of it. Don't listen to it. If people come to you and say, you know, you have to do so and so and so to receive salvation. Or you have to uh, starve and do all of this to, to get salvation. Or you have to do the communion and, and, you know, by doing all of this. Where you get all of this? It's not in the Bible. It means you don't accept it. How can I do it? By faith. What kind of faith? Faith in the word of God. You see, it's so important to understand, to believe in the word of God. Because it is written. That's what uh, Jesus uh, resisted the devil 
when he say, it is written, it is written, it is written. And if you know what it's written, you will be able to resist the devil with what it is written. But if you don't know what it is written, you will not be able to resist the devil because you, you don't know the word. You see here, that needs earnestly, contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. After that, you see, next verse will tell us more in verse 4, in Judah, in Jude, uh, verse 4. Let us continue, because there are people that enter the Christianity, enter, uh, you know, in, and taking the, um, and trying to add to the word of God. You have to be aware of that. You have to know the word of God so nobody can come and deceive you with any teaching outside from the word of God. Next, please. Verse 4, Jude um, 4. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turned the grace of God into lewdness and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So people come and tell, you know, you know, you have to love everybody, you know. There is many ways to go to heaven. Jesus is not the, the only one, and the cross is not the only one, and there is many ways that people can go to heaven. From where you got this teaching, it's not in the Bible. So it's in your philosophy. You make it appear to the people as nice, that you're accepting everybody under the umbrella of love. They do that. They have a lot of people, they love that teaching. But it's not in the word of God. We don't accept it. You know, Brother Najib also, we were talking to him this morning and say, you know, so, you know, the evil try to divide, try to make us move from the truth of God. By what? By different things. Activities in the church. Activities doesn't, doesn't give salvation. He say, even, we are talking about the uh, Satan and, you know, um, how you cast away all the, the, the spirit, the demon spirits, etc. But that's not, it's not going to give salvation. If those people who receive uh, that power of God to get the, uh, the demon out from them, if they don't accept Jesus as their Savior, Satan will come again to their life. So what we're going to gain? Nothing. The only way for salvation is through faith by accepting the blood of Christ. That's the only way. That's the only way. And if we try to make it easy for other people or try to make it simple or try to simplify by our own philosophy, you know, we are, we are like those people here. We have to trust in the word of God as the only way of salvation. And the truth is here. And he said, nothing. It's only given and once forever to the saint. Means nothing we can add to it. Nothing you can take it away. And we don't need any, any other ways that we know the truth except from the Bible, from the word of God. So let me go uh, back to, um, to the faith that is uh, telling us in 1 Peter 5 and verse, 1 Peter 5 and verse, where we got here, 1 Peter 5 and verse, verse 9. <clears throat> Thank you. Resist to him. Resist to him. That's our our job to do, you know, that you have to resist the devil. Don't accept the ideas. Don't accept his lies. Don't accept what he offer you. Resist him. How will I resist? Submit to the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee away from you. But you see, resist him steadfast in the faith. Which kind of faith? The faith in the word of God, again. 
Because that's the way, when Satan comes to you, the only way, the only sword that you can use to destroy him is the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, you will not be able to resist and steadfast. You have to be steadfast in the faith of the word of God. It is written, you will go with Satan and say, it is written, I'm not going to listen to you, hear the truth. I'm not going to accept your lies. When you go to the word and uh, to the Lord and you have a promise, you put your hand in the promise and say, Lord, you say that I trust in you because it is written here. Do we have that faith in the word of God? Oh, we're just reading the word of God. We memorize the more, you know. Uh, we are, you know, I know the Bible. I know how, how to, you know, say the verse. And I, I can tell you where it is. And I can give you, you know, a lot of uh, apolog apolog apologetics about, you know, to, to tell them about you. But are you living? If you believe it, you have to live it. If you don't believe it, you don't live it. And if you believe in the word of God, if you have faith, that is real faith, life, you will steadfast in the faith, in the faith of the word of God. So how many types of faith I mentioned? Three here. The first one, the common faith is what? Salvation. The second is there is increased level of faith in God trusting the Lord, trusting the Lord. And the third one Faith in the word of God. Those are the three types of faith. So sometimes somebody asks you about, you know, the faith, what, you know, you know from the Bible, the three types of faith here. Steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the word. You see, we need each other here. Telling you that get together, support each other, you are brother and sisters in the same war against one enemy who is the devil. And we need each other to stay fast in the faith of the word of God. You know, Satan is very alert, very oriented of the church and of the individual in the church. He is real. He is real and he is your enemy. And he is watch. he doesn't sleep. And he is waiting for you to sleep or to give a space or to, um, to give up or to listen to his idea. And he will get you, catch you in that point. So that's why we have, we have knowing that, knowing we all suffer. You know, the, 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 as we... In this war with Satan, we are in a war and there is suffering on it. Why there is suffering? Because there are people can get wounded. You see, our brother, my brother, my sister can get wounded. What do you mean wounded? Yes, there is a war. Satan attacked that, that my, my brother, my brother get attacked. And what happened? He's bleeding. What do you mean by bleeding? Yes, he is losing his faith. He is, he's doubting. He is... So what I have to do? I have to go and you make the surgery. What do you mean I mean surgery? You know, block the area that is bleeding. Help him. You know, sometimes we look at it. We are all should be aware that we are as a body of Christ. If somebody suffer from wounded, from, from the war with, with Satan, we have all to get together to support each other. We need each other. You cannot be alone with Satan. Satan, the, the only thing about lion, I hear about it, that he will, will scream and roaring lion means he wanted to make you afraid. And what, what is his plan? His plan to separate the animals. They, he, he doesn't want the lion, the main idea of lion, he wanted to scare them. So what's going to happen? They will separate. When they are separated, he can take one by one, kill them one by one. You see what he wanted to do, Satan, with us guys? He wanted to separate us from each other. He knows that as you are part of the body of Christ, as we are together, he cannot attack us because we are supporting each other. 
As we are separated, he can, he can play with each one of us separ separately. And he can deceive us and can eat us. Be aware. That's a certain idea is to make you separated from the church. Leave the church or be alone. And it will be so easy to attack you as wrong. That's why we need to eat each other. That's why we need to be in the church. That we, not, we need not just being in a church. The church is not a building. The church is the body of Christ, means people. You and ye and each one of you. That's the church. The building is just to, to be here. But we are the body of Christ. You are the church. And here it say, knowing that the same suffering, we understand each other. When we talk to with each other, we know what I am going through will be the same as you're going through. And you need your brother to help you to fight. If he went through that before, he will be able to help you. Because he went with Satan with the same war as you are going right now. We need each other. We need to support. We need to pray for each other. That's what the church for. Suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. The whole world. It's not just in Long Beach. That the church all over the world. You see, we separate each other by religious and by, you know, um, things. But, but God look, us, look at us as a church as from all the world. And that's the territory of Satan right now. You see, the territory of Satan is the word, but mainly the body of Christ, the believers. That's, you are his territory. The attack, he doesn't attack people who under his influence. He attacked the people who are under the influence of God. And he wanted to destroy. That's his idea. Next verse, please. Verse 10. You see here, I'm going to end with five or six points here. You see, that's the character of God. <laughs> that's the promise of God to you. Yes, 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 yes. Satan is scary. Satan is strong. Satan is, is um, so evil. But we have the promise of God. The war is not ours. The war is, is for God. He will destroy him. How? You see here in the verse, but May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. You see, each one of us has been suffering from that. Maybe one month, maybe two months, maybe three months. You suffer a little bit, but it's always a while. There is a time that we suffer. And maybe here during that time of while we are here on earth, we are suffering because Satan having been um, destroyed, having been put in the, um, put in the, uh, in Revelation 20, we know the end of, of Satan. Where is going to end? He is still, God give him the permission, a lease, you know, a lease. I mean, somebody give you lease for a week or, or, or a month, you know, to lease an area. And after that, you have to leave. Satan, God give Satan a lease to stay in the world for a short time. And, and there is an end for him. And while we are during that time, you know, God, his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, called us to his eternal glory by Jesus after, after you have suffered suffered a while. You see, there is a lot of time in the verses you say a while. Be encouraged. It's not going to be forever. It's a while. But the eternal glory of Jesus Christ is forever, eternal. He, you see, all of that after suffering, he perfect, establish, strings, and settle you. In this verse, I wanted to give you um, four or five points. Number one, the character of God. He didn't say the God of all fairness or all God of all justice, but he said God of all grace. He can say God of all the truth. Yeah, but here, with our war with, with, with Satan, God here characterized the character, God's character is God 
of all grace. When God ex um, um, expressed his character to Moses in, in Exodus 24, he said, Lord, merciful, gracious. That's the character of God. Character of God is merciful and grace. You know, when you are in the war with, with, with Satan, God look at you with mercy. He understands the war. He understands your suffering. He understands what you are going through. And he is God of all mercy and grace. He is full compassion and gracious. You know, under the law, Moses bring the law that tell you, you have to do it to be able to live. But you know, God, God under his grace in Jesus, give you the righteousness based on his work, not my work. The law of Moses tell you to do the work and God in Jesus give you the work to do, give you the strings to do the work. Under law, it takes one sin to break the law. But under grace, it takes one savior to fix all our weaknesses. What a glorious thing to know that you are dealing now. You are under the grace, not you are not under the law. And God of all grace. Grace is what God deals with you. It is not what you deserve, but what Jesus did in the cross. If you put grace, okay, anybody uh, awake still? Grace, can you spell grace? G R A C E. Okay. So if you put it, I, I hear it today and I love that. I, I, I love it. That's the meaning of grace, right? G R A C E. Okay. Are you ready? So G, you put God. Okay. R, put rich. A, put at. C, put Christ. E, put expense. Okay, let us read again. So G is God, R is rich, A, T, at, C, Christ, E, expense. What, so what's grace? Grace means God rich at Christ's expense. God richness is at Christ's expense. He pay it all. He in the cross say, it is done. He pay it for us. That's God's grace for me. You don't have to do anything, just accept. And then our war with, with, with Satan, God tell you, it is God of all grace. You are dealing with not God of all righteousness. He's not standing to punish you for your weakness or your fall, but he's standing to strengthen you and to have compassion with you in the area where you are dealing with. He is ready to give you the strings to be able to victorious, not to commend you, not to judge you, but to lift you up and give you strength in your war with Christ. So number one, he is God of all grace. Second, he called us, you see, the calling, God's call to eternal life. You see, everything we do here in life is for a while, but God's call is for eternal life, for glory in heaven forever. And you compare compare with the suffering while to the eternity forever, glory forever. Second, second part here, the calling based on this first, God's grace. According to God's grace, I have been called for the eternal glory. And the source for that, the third thing, is the source is by Christ Jesus. It's not because of my work, but because of Jesus Christ. You are not automatically get heaven, but only when you're born, you get heaven, but only comes by Jesus Christ when you are born again. You get into the heaven by being born again, not just by being born 
The third thing I wanted to tell you, so number one, God's grace. Number two, God's calling to eternal life. Number three, it's by Jesus Christ, it's not by work. And after, number four here, God's curriculum, we call it. God's curriculum. What's God, God's curriculum? In any school, there is a curriculum, you know, to get into the knowledge that we wanted to end our year. There is a curriculum. After you have, you say, the Lord here say, after you have suffered a while. Suffering is part of God's curriculum to mature us. You see, you are suffering, yes. It's in, in the will of God. God's willing is to suffer. Why? Because he wanted to mature us. He wanted to purify us. He doesn't want it to destroy us, but he wanted to make us bigger and bigger in faith. He wanted us to trust in him more. He wanted to humble us to rely on his grace instead of relying on ourselves. And suffering is going, to, is going to make that possible in me, break me to bless me. He's going to work on me to give me a blessing. And we know, as in Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good for those who are called according to his mercy. Last thing here, God's commitment. God's commit himself that he is going to do three things here. After you have suffered a while, he will perfect, establish, strengths, and settle you. Praise the Lord. You know, that's the end of it. Remember, we start with the war with, the, with, with Satan. And remember, you have, you have responsibility. You have to resist the devil. You have to be sober. You have to be aware of your surrounding. and all. You have to be uh, established in the faith, which is in the word of God. But God has a commitment for you and for me to perfect your weaknesses. I am not perfect, but by his grace, he can make me perfect. He perfect established. Yes, I'm shaking, but he is going to establish like what he said to, to Peter. When you return, you will establish. Not you will be established by yourself, but you will establish others as well. As I, I, I give you the strings, as I give you the perfect, I, as, as I give you the grace and establish you, you will go and establish others. I'm going to give you strings in your weakness. That's God's commitment to me and you. He will perfect, he will establish, he will strings and settle you. You see, you are maybe wondering today when it's going to settle. You know, there is no end for what I'm going through of suffering or troubles. But the Lord promised his commitment to me and you to perfect, establish strengths and settle you. Can you trust in him today? Can you come to him as you are and tell him, Lord, Lord, I trust in you. You are God of all grace. I'm coming to you not because I am good or I am I'm, I'm good in my war with, with Satan or I'm, I'm victorious. I am not. I need you. I need your grace. I trust in you, Lord. I thank you for your calling. You call me for eternal glory. And I know that I, have, I cannot come to you except according to Jesus Christ. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Let us pray together. I will ask uh, the worship team to come. But I wanted you to take a few minutes and, and pray and trust in the Lord again. Get your strengths from him. Establish yourself. He will establish you. He will strengthen. He will perfect you. He will settle you up.
Spirit strong.
we thank you that we can boldly say that it is well within our souls, Lord, though the world may be chaotic around us, we have peace in knowing that you are our salvation and the work is completed on the cross, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, Lord. Pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. May God help us to really increase our faith and to um, just have that, that trust in the Lord to, to um, grow our faith in, in all the different ways. Um, just to, I think just one announcement, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, to, on Sunday, or today, tomorrow, actually, um, at 7 p.m., there is a special combined meeting with Brother Nagib and um, another guest speaker. And then on Sunday, at both the noon meetings and at the um, 4.30 meetings, it will be um, also a combined meeting in Arabic with those, both those guest speakers. Um, so, yeah, the youth will be a combined at that time, but the translation will be available. Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah, if, any, if anybody would volunteer, um, I don't know if you guys heard Pastor Nazi said to get us, we need some ushers to help, because there'll be some guests both Friday, or not Friday, Saturday and Sunday, to help people like come in and hand them, um, you know, like a, a thing, um, like an envelope or like a whatever. Anyway, whatever you're handing out to them. So if anybody is willing to do that and available, please talk to Pastor Nazi and, um, and we'll set that up. And thank you guys. I think that's it. <laughs>